My first visit to Calgary came in about 1975, when I was near the end of my residency at the University of Western Ontario. Bob Lee, who had been a mentor for me when I was an intern in Toronto, had come to Calgary and was starting to put together the beginnings of a department. He asked me to come out and look at an opportunity, and I was glad to do that. I remember the visit well. Bob's a, a gracious host. He took me to the mountains to see Banff. At the time, it was not quite enough to lure me, but certainly he planted the seed. So my next encounter with Calgary came uh, in 1990, when I was one of a number of candidates to replace Bob as he was stepping down as the head of the Department of Clinical Neurosciences. I was honored to be asked to look at that job, and I sensed the potential of Calgary and the University of Calgary and the new Department of Clinical Neurosciences on that visit. Fortunately, I was offered the job in the end and started the job on the 1st of September, uh, 1991. I was really fortunate that a good groundwork had been laid for the department and there were many strong people in the department, including the two founders, Bob Lee and Frank LeBlanc. And I would boil down my philosophy about building a department and success in this sort of enterprise into one word, and that's people. So there were already some good people on site, and I set out trying to recruit more good people who I knew would be builders and make things stronger in the time to come. My first attempt at recruit came a week after I had arrived, at a point when I barely knew where the washrooms were. My former resident and younger colleague Doug Zakodny was returning from Vancouver on a trip back to Queens, and I'd asked him to stop in to see me. Doug and I had a good visit. And I told him I was keen to recruit him. At the time, I really had very little in the way of resources. But Doug is resourceful and self-sufficient, and he came as a first recruit a year later, funded by the Alberta Heritage Foundation on a clinical investigator work. Our residency programs were small when I first came to Calgary. Nothing like they are today, where they're very large, very successful, and I think provide a very high quality of training. It's not that the training wasn't good when I first arrived, but we just didn't have many residents. In fact, in the neurology program, we had no residents. I guess you could call that a low point. I was concerned about that, and fortunately we had a very enthusiastic young educator named Neil Higgin. Neil is also a neuro-oncologist. And I was able to persuade Neil to take on the role as the director of the neurology residency program. I also was able to persuade a young trainee to join us that first year, just to kickstart the program. And then, of course, Neil took it from there and built it into a strong program and ultimately turned it over to our first neurology residency graduate, Bill Fletcher, who took it from there. We had no program in physiatry in those days. Uh, that, uh, that situation has changed, of course in large part because of John Ladder, who was recruited from Manitoba to be the head of physiatry. And one of his key uh, uh, key goals was to build a residency training program. The result of that is today that we have one of the leading physiatry training programs in Canada, a strong and vigorous program, and a lot of that credit goes to John. Since I've come to Calgary, the world of neurological treatment has advanced tremendously. I'm very proud to say that members of our department have had key roles in that. For instance, we are now able to do very sophisticated spinal reconstructive surgery. I think our strong spinal surgery program has, has played a major leading role in that. We're also very involved in deep brain stimulation and other neurointerventional approaches for movement disorders, which is a major advance. And of course, there's the development of the interoperative MRI and the neurosurgical robo robot under the, under the leadership of Garnet Sutherland, which has been unique and is now having a worldwide impact. The other area to mention is stroke, which I've commented on earlier, but some specific things. First, Calgary was a real leader in the introduction and the examination of TPA as a treatment for, treatment for acute stroke. This has led to many other advances, and in particular, the very recent successful completion of the ESCAPE 
trial, led by Michael Hill, Andrew Demchek, and Mayan Goyal, which showed that actual retrieval of the clot through endovascular techniques can have a major positive impact in the outcome of stroke. And I might say parenthetically, it shows one of the tremendous advantages of the Department of Clinical Neurosciences, which is a combined multidisciplinary department, and in that case, illustrating how effective it was to work closely with our colleagues in neuroradiology and neurosurgery and neurology to bring about that successful trial. Advice for future department leaders. That's a tricky, a tricky question, and uh, my dad would have said, free advice, it's not worth a damn. But I'll take a shot anyway. I think it might be best to explain my philosophy in that area by telling a little story with a neurological twist. About 2002, we decided to enter a team into the Calgary Marathon Relay. This was a neurologically oriented team, which we called Equipe Neurologique. And what I did as team captain was to recruit people who were younger than I was and ran faster than I did. These people included Walter Hader, Phil Barber, and Mark Poulin. They were rabbits. And wouldn't you know what? We came in first in a time of 254. I've adopted that same approach to leadership, and I would express it in this way. I think it's best to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you are and work harder than you do. It's also important, of course, to give those people space to operate, provide constructive feedback, and really celebrate their successes.